We wanted to make a production for the centenary of the First World War. We decided not to tell a story from a play or a film from the period, but look for somebody real. It's true that we tend to focus on the man that went to war, but the piece is about victims of war, whether you stayed at home or you went away. The story really is about Florence Billington. Florence Billington was an ordinary young girl, and she met a young man, and they fell in love just before he went away to war. She said, I would have waited for him for eternity. Everybody, whether you are the wife or the girlfriend, is a victim. The whole idea was to find out who the unknown soldier was. And of course, no one will ever know who he really was, but he represents hundreds of thousands of young men who died on the battlefield, but had no marked grave. As long as you remember those people, they are still there. It's when you forget them, they, they disappear. Good evening and a very warm welcome to the Royal Opera House. I'm Emma Southworth and I am the creative producer for the Royal Ballet. This evening we're going to be exploring the Royal Ballet's brand new production, The Unknown Soldier. It's been created at the moment by choreographer Alistair Marriott with set designer Ez Devlin, composer Dario Marianelli and costume designer Jonathan Howes. And the piece marks the centenary of the end of the First World War in 1918. The Unknown Soldier premieres here at the Royal Opera House on the 20th of November, so do have a look at the Royal Opera House website for more information. We have a fascinating world to explore this evening. Our newest principal of the Royal Ballet, Matthew Ball, is going to be rehearsing two solos from the ballet. And then I'm going to be talking to Alistair Marriott, the choreographer, and set des um, costume designer, Jonathan Howells, about the creation of the piece. And of course, we want to hear from you this evening. So do send us your thoughts and your comments from YouTube. Now, please give a very warm welcome to Alistair Marriott. Um, Alistair, we're about to see a rehearsal, um, the first of Matt's solos. Could you just give us a little context of the piece before we see that rehearsal? Where, where did it get conceived? Well, originally this ballet, we thought that we wanted to do a play or a film or something of the era. But when Ez and I got together, she really was keen to do something real that involved real people. And she said to me, go and find me some, somebody real. So I went and watched a lot of documentaries and we came up with the, these characters and, and they tell their own real life story. Um, so we don't have to follow uh, uh, um, something that was made, you know, uh, as a kind of... Uh, commercial venture. Great. Um, so we're about to see you rehearse with Matt and I think Jonathan's going to join us um, yep. as ballet master and working with you. Um, where does that solo come in the ballet? The first solo you'll see comes right at the very beginning. The overture just before that you'll see um, two films and they're very short but the first one is of Florence Bennington and she starts to explain her recollections of the First World War, and then there's some music, and you see um, images of uh, the procession of the burial of um, the unknown soldier. And those images, as yet, are being made at the moment, so I don't know exactly what you'll see, because um, this is still quite early on. And then the first solo, you, you see uh, Matthew, and he's almost a bit like a poet. He doesn't quite fit in. These people didn't go to join the army. They signed up. Um, and you realise he's kind of a romantic figure. And then 
as all the other soldiers join him, you realize he's one of many. So the first solo is that kind of showing you that he, he's an individual. Yeah. Great. Um, I'm going to leave you to get on with the okay. rehearsal now. Um, please give a very warm welcome to principal dancer of the Royal Ballet, Matthew Ball, Alistair Marriott. <laughs> And we're also going to be joined by Jonathan Howes and Philip Cornfield on the piano. Thank you. Thank you. OK, Phil. So I have all my counts here. <laughs> but as we've been rehearsing a little bit for this, it's not perfect yet. Matthew's pretty perfect, but we still work to do, so, you know. Um, anyway, so this is Matt's first solo. Phil, if you could give the introduction and the music that Dario has written has a theme tune to The Unknown Soldier and this kind of appears throughout the ballet. I think he's taking and it from that traditional idea that uh, in romantic ballets like Giselle, every character has a theme when they come on stage and he has definitely got a theme. Yeah. And the poor uh, trumpeter, it's a trumpet theme, and uh, it's a great part for him in the orchestra. And we heard a run through the other night, the first read through for the orchestra. And he literally was bright red in the face because it's so hard for him, but it's a great challenge and he was amazing and we were really thrilled with it. So um, anyway, you'll get to hear it later and a bit of that. So Matt, um, can we, uh, give you those when you're in the opening position the two sixes and seven into your solo that'd be great phil thank you and this is the trumpet theme two three four five six Just up there, Matt. Good. Really nice. Nice feeling of the kind of poetic soldier, someone who is not sure about going to war and everything. I just feel like that first moment, it's almost like a yawn, would you say, Al, the, this first moment. And this movement here, and then the, if you could get more of that roll. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that would be really great. Deeper, and then here, shape. Shape that front foot, Matt. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that, you know, when we originally choreographed this, he came from the very back of the stage, and in the staging now, there's different things that happen in the staging. There's a ceiling that comes down and that. So he's very kind of left as a solitary figure on his own. You don't have very far to run, I know. I think you should leave it till as late as you possibly can so that you still run forward at the last minute, even though it's only about six feet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just try that, so you've got your, the deepness in this movement, the roll, the roll, and then shape that foot into this. And if you can really hold on to that, Poet. Yeah, really, like the last minute before you go to the floor. Hold down, yeah, that's really good, man. Yeah, really good. And then the roll, and then, that rond, if you could really show that on the floor. And then this moment, it's... How would you explain this moment, Al, like when he's up on the knee, the, it's the, the thought he should be having there? I always feel like um, what's happening is, on stage when you see this piece, you'll see eventually a load of soldiers, but you never really know what they're thinking because they're all exactly the same. And in this part, you, it's as if you home into somebody's thoughts and they're thinking about something completely different. And by the end of the solo, he joins the rest of the soldiers and they all keep marching. So it's as if you've homed in on what one of those soldiers was actually thinking about. OK, let's try that again. And we'll go on. We'll go on to the next section. Yeah. OK, thanks, Phil. Same thing. Yeah. Thank you. And...
That's better. Yes. Hold. Yes. Beautiful. Yep. Good, good, good. So stop there. Good, Matt. Really nice work. Um, the beginning was so much better. That yeah. made so much more sense when you're watching. It's like watching a story and you could see it in your face. It's great. These movements, you just need to roll more into them. Yeah? yeah? A bit more, yeah, a bit more relaxed, yeah. That's beautiful, yeah. And then, from this turn, you need to really squeeze Squeeze the preparation so you hover and then really hold back on that to the last moment. So you're really using every phrase of the music. Yeah. You know when you jumped, you know, you know when you did this jump, mm -hmm. I think you need to lift your head a little bit. It looks yeah. like, yeah, it, it almost needs to be like that. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. There's that theme, isn't there, you've got going through this valley in the jump. We kind of talked about in rehearsals, Alice just talk, talked about the kind of almost as if they're being shot in the back. And even though it's a very, uh, a, quite a, a normal jump that we would do in ballet with the arms that we're trying to get this feeling, it's not necessarily that being shot. But it's kind of a quite nice theme that kind of mm. runs through with We've the soldiers. We've kind of adapted yeah. a lot of classical steps that started off as jetés, and then they've kind of gradually changed into something that feels much more naturalistic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was good. That's talked about that. This going to the knee. This is a really tricky movement to do. I did this in my youth. <laughs> going to. <laughs> Yeah, I was. Yeah, that's really nice, Matt. Just, just careful, Matt. Just again shaping that back foot on the arabesque. But from there, the the nice thing. So nice shaped foot, but also the the actual. You can actually turn in this movement. But if you really relax into the plie, it would be really nice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then again the the. This movement with the arm, it's giving the quality to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's go, can you place the 11? Yeah. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Really, that's beautiful. And sustain and hold. Good, man. Hold in the back. Yes. Reach. <laughs> yeah, it's quite tricky because you're now the movement's so good, but you're just getting a little bit late. Just to explain, at this point, when he starts the next step, uh, the the set has changed, and it reveals many more soldiers. So when he does this step, and then he does a turn, when he starts to march, 
they join in, almost like toy soldiers. They, 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 they mirror what he's doing. Um, obviously, you have to imagine those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and also, um, the other soldiers is just one of Matt. We're focusing in on him, but actually, they're all the unknown soldier. So, so. When, when this solo finishes and they march yeah. off, you realise he's just one of a lot of people. Yeah and they all look exactly the same. Yeah. But you get a kind of insight into the, the fact that they're all individual, and this is what someone might be thinking. Matt, yeah. when you do the roll down to the knee, which I can't do because I'm way too old, um, and the cartwheel, yeah. this movement here, if you could go, as you come out of the cartwheel, yeah. go down before you go up, and then re just release the head right yeah. at the end. You're just cutting it slightly. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like um, it starts in the same way, but it's exactly. Well, which I hadn't about yeah, it. exactly. It does. Yeah. Show me. Yeah. Good. And then just finish off that little bit more. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And the it's exactly the same. Th yeah. To get round, you need to use the shoulder, but also the lower you can feel the ground. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a seven, eight, nine, and dun, dun, dun. So a lot of these positions, this position, yeah. comes from like Isadora Duncan, who at that time um, is a very, very popular force. So in research, we've looked a lot back to make modern movement as to what you could see at the time. Yeah. And these are very kind of Isadora movements. OK, I'm just going to see where we can go from um, Piquet Arabesque, yes, that would be great. So this is one, two, three, four, yeah, yeah. You all right, Matt? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. And to reach three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and up to Three, go four. That's it. Relax your head. Yes, good. Seven, eight, nine, and one, two, three, four. Good, Matt. Very good. He's actually doing it very well because they, <laughs> those tricks yeah. are really hard. <laughs> but he doesn't have very much space to do them in, and they're happening very quick. Normally, you'd have much more time to do a trick and then prepare for another one. And I put three very close together. Matt, when you're yeah. doing your double thing here, I know it's hard. What we've got to try and do is link that step into the yeah. next one. Yeah. So I'm feeling, I don't know if you're agreeing, Al, feeling like as you go round and land, you're this way, aren't you? Land. It's, it's actually the opening of the chest that then leads you around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. Show me one of those. Open and round. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, and we never okay. saw the joint yeah. there. I never saw the joint. But what's hard then is to go into the military. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you've got to relax and then just think smart. Yeah. See, if he was on his own, it wouldn't be so hard because he could steal a yeah. bit of music. But there are 10 people behind him on the music marching. So he has to be yeah. <laughs> exactly on it. When you've done your reveltar, which we like because it's a normal reveltar, well, in ballet, we would do a uh, toe to knee, land. They're hard enough anyway, but actually Max made it even harder to the joy of Alistair. <laughs> and he's doing a reveltar, which is knee to knee. And it, it just 
gives a different element to it, but it's, it looks quite beautiful, uh, done well. Yes, good. If you could, it'd be even better, Matt. <laughs> he was good, he was really good. But it would be even better, knee to knee, head up at the end. Mm. Yeah, I know that's hard. Go and head up, yes! Brilliant, excellent, really beautiful, yeah. Then again, on the attitude turns, the kind of, the spot, I think with attitude turns, it's all about the way the body le leads around. So it gets quite boring if it just goes up, yeah. round. It actually, what you need, you need the spiral of the body. Yeah, yeah, it's hard, but it looks more interesting. Yeah, good. That's really that's good. That's really good. Yeah. But that's hard after the Revel Tard, you know. <laughs> We're asking him a lot of things, so, yeah. <clears throat> but that's why he's a principal, our newest principal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, done the Revel Tard, you do two attitude turns. What's after that? Remind me? Yeah. Da, da. Again, yeah. Al? I think you just, as long as you make it slightly syncopated, so that if you do a slow one, then you do a fast yeah. one, otherwise it yeah. becomes even. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's ah, better. That's, yeah. and again, what we talked about in the rehearsal, yes. um, over, make sure that this step goes completely cross through, then you get the lean off. Yeah. Over. Step across, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. That's good, that's better. And I know that they're not there at the moment, yeah. but I, I thought this while you were away, to remember to run round yeah. the nearest soldier, yeah. yeah. Let's go from the first military after the nine. If you play the nine for us, that would be great, Phil. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one, two, three, push, chest, roll, good. Knee to knee, head up, yes, squeeze, spiral, six, seven, roll, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, reach, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, five, six, the early, stop, okay, good, good, Matt, good, Matt, good. So the idea of this is that they, Florence says that um, when they remember watching these boys practice in the fields and that, that the girls used to watch them thinking, what are they doing, you know? And I think that he's one of those people that dreams. It's quite, an, a, quite a nice summery day and he just kind of lies back and lies in the sun, which is not probably what he should be doing. But it gives you an idea that his character is more romantic than just being a career soldier. And also he, in, um, in real life, they were 16, 17 Sometimes years Sometimes they old. were even younger. That's what I think is yeah. quite sad, is that yeah. they were meant to be about 17, but a lot of the boys that joined up were as young as 14. And when you look at the photographs, you can clearly see that they're children. Yeah. But the government didn't care because they needed lots and lots of people. So they turned a blind eye to these children joining up. Now, he's meant to be about 16, mm -hmm. 17. Um, but actually, Matt, how old are you? 24. 24. So yeah. it's like... <laughs> Even young, like I've, I've got kind of the, a very young cast to play this ballet, but you have to imagine how young these people really were is quite kind of frightening. It was really sad, I mean, just to give Matt a breather, just to talk, 
when Alistair has asked him to go and find three people. And actually, that all came about from him talking to Ayres about actually his grand's own experience in the Second World War. And she totally fell in love with that. It was a real love story his grand has. And I'm not sure whether he would want to, like, send that out there. She wanted to put my grand's life on stage, and I was like, <laughs> I don't think Granny would like that, to be honest, so we're not doing that. But she said, well, it's really fascinating. It's much more interesting than the play. And so go and find somebody like this. Yeah. And uh, so I found a young girl that fell in love when she was 16 with a boy. And she thought it was the love of her life. And then he, he went away to war. Mm -hmm. And so we've been trying to understand that without the internet and without all the film, and it wasn't until Vietnam that people even saw war live. So people just used to read the newspaper and things. So they didn't really have the concept that we have now of war. Anyway, he, it was quite amazing. He, I mean, Alice is a bit of a night owl anyway. And he, I'd gone to bed, uh, I had to get up early for rehearsal the next day. He came to bed six o'clock in the morning, uh, tears, down his face, because he'd watched all these documentaries. And he just said, I don't know whether I can do this ballet because it's so upsetting. And, and, and I was like, oh my God, you've just spent hours watching all this awful and very terrifying footage of what happened. And, but during the evening, he came across these amazing interviews, uh, which was uh, a documentary done by the BBC. And he found Florence Billington, who was 102, she's, she's, I think, when she was interviewed, yeah. and, and Harry, Harry Patch. Patch. She was 106 when they interviewed him, but he yeah. lived till 112. Yeah, and they recalled their times. And, and to actually hear the real people talking about their time there was pretty amazing that they got this footage from these people. So that, he went back to Ayres. And he arrived in our dressing room down in uh, the bowels of the opera house. And Ez arrived there and she was in her hat and she was, you know, and we said, oh, well, Alice said, oh, I've, got, I've come across this uh, footage. And she sat there and almost cried. We uh, played her Florence Billington's speeches and Harry's uh, speech. And she said, well, I think we've got the start to a really interesting project and a really interesting way of communicating with an audience what kind of went on during that time and from a real life person. It's a so real story. I think story. it's such a big subject that what we decided was to reduce it to just one little ordinary life and in a kind of extraordinary event. So um, really the story of the unknown soldier comes down to Florence Bennington's story yeah. of her boyfriend who went away. And of course, it could, it could have, the unknown soldier could have been Florence's boy, but it could have been any boy that was that age at that time um, because he represented that. And I thought, well, we'll focus on one and show one little life. And that hopefully will represent all those 600,000 lives. OK, Matt, let's just quickly uh, do um, the end. So if you could play the six and the eight, one, two, three, and four. It's when you're running around, Matt. And then we'll just go to the end where you end up in the same position as the soldiers and walk off, yeah. So, OK. Thanks, Phil. And two, three, go. Four, five, six, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, relax. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Lots of soldiers around the stage, same position. And they all march. Good. Okay. Good.
Good, Matt. So, so you nice. see, what, I, yeah. I, what I've, I actually saw a film recently, I don't know if you've seen this on the internet, of one of the, I think he's a Welsh guard and he was outside Buckingham Palace and you know they have the sentry boxes and he's marching along and then he suddenly starts dancing and it was like a really big thing on the internet yeah, because I I don't know why. He, he just did Chinese. Started doing he actually started Chinese. And it was to the left, which is quite unusual. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm that's what this is. I'm going to interrupt you now. I'm going to interrupt you now. I'm just going to have a quick chat with um, Matt about his role, and then we're going to have a chat. But thank you ever so much. Okay. That was brilliant. A little round of applause for Matt. Great. Here you go up that way. Good. Great. I need to pick it up. Great. Taking a deep breath. Yeah. Um, Matt, you've obviously got one of the main roles in this ballet. But is it, what was it like when you're working with Alistair and you've got this role that's being created on you as opposed to, you know, learning, you know, a role that's been danced, you know, for decades? Yeah, I mean, um, I think the, the prospect of having a creation on you is always something that's very rewarding for a dancer. I think it's uh, something that everyone kind of looks to have at some point in their career and... Um, you know, hopefully on multiple occasions. Um, working with Alistair and stuff particularly, he's very um, keen to get your movement style in there yes. and yeah. not be too prescriptive what he wants. Obviously, he has an, uh, some ideas which kind of you kind of translate through your own body, which is just a really interesting kind of yeah. process to go through. And then uh, you kind of meet somewhere in the middle mm. and that's where, like, the kind of creative spark happens yes. where there's that, you know, um, I don't know, kind of and bits it's of inspiration. Yours, yeah, yeah. But also, yeah, you feel like um, you're invested within the work, which is, you know, yeah. a lot more rewarding than yeah. just kind of being um, told what to do. Yeah. I mean, in this role, I mean, we've just heard them talking about it. There's something quite harrowing, isn't there, about, you know, the First World War and the loss of life and but all the people who were left behind as well. But does that give you a sense of sort of, I don't know, responsibility when you're, you know, portraying those people on stage? Yeah, I think I think definitely there's a kind of responsibility towards mm. this. Um, you know, I think the First World War and, you know, it's uh, and the Second World War and all these things, they're part of our kind of na national identity, I yes, feel like, yeah. and it was a massive part of um, the kind of... English work we would do at school even and all that sort of thing and how it affected everything about our culture. Um, but also, you know, it has to be done with sensitivity. But um, I think it's important to look at these things in a fresh light, you know, a hundred years later to have something that's new, um, inspiring and kind of uh, rejuvenates the interest and the, um, the thoughtfulness uh, people can have about yeah. such a, you know, important event, which is obviously very sombre, yeah. but... Um, Hopefully, you know, people can take some sort of a positive message from it, maybe as well as, um, you know, remembering yes. what's passed. Yeah. And we saw you do, um, there was a pas de deux that was created in about May for an, um, an event that we did here. But has your character sort of developed from there? Do you feel it's still developing on the stage and as, you, as more of the ballet gets created? Yeah, I think um, definitely the, char the character, like Alistair was saying, um, you know, he could, he could be many people. Mm. So I think... Um, you know, they've got, it's kind of open to interpretation and uh, it's kind of growing, I guess, as well with like where, where that's coming from, um, yes, you know, the yeah. kind of um, the impulses and where, you know, what he wants to do. Obviously, that relationship is a key yeah. uh, part of the story and the dialogue um, between the two characters is something that kind of shapes them both um, yeah. and probably is one of them, you know, one of the main reasons he's got drawing him uh, back home, why he doesn't yeah. want to leave, what he wants to come back to. It's, a, it's maybe why he's dreaming in the grass in the first place. So um, I think, you know, the character is going to keep on growing. And I think, you know, even after we uh, put this to bed after doing it the first time around, it'll probably come back keep and him, hopefully yeah. we'll get to do something more with it that time. Yeah. So. Yeah, I Brilliant. think it's a living character. Great. I just have to ask you as well, you know, you've just been made principal with the Royal Ballet. Yeah. You know, can you feel... Is, does that change how you're doing things or the roles that you're doing? Is, has there been a big shift since that's happened? Um, I've been kind of lucky enough to get, like, quite a lot of uh, big opportunities, some principal roles over the past few years already. Yeah. So I guess, um, Obviously, there is a shift slightly in terms of like some of the roles I'll be doing, but um, I have had some experience with working on that kind of yeah. uh, repertoire. So it doesn't feel like too much of a seismic yeah. shift. But I think as well, it's also the kind of um, the kind of change that happens over time. It's the yes. kind of thing that like uh, is still sinking in. It's kind of funny to think about. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, you know, I Don't can't, think about it too I can't much. Call my, I find it weird to call myself that title. Um, so. 
I just think over, you know, over passage of time, hopefully I'll kind of get used to it, I'll kind of grow into it. And I think as well, it's all about kind of finding a bit of an identity as well when you become yes, a yeah. principal and like kind of what, uh, what's almost your niche or what, um, you know, special about you as a dancer. Great. We can leave it there. Yeah. Um, we're going to let you have a rest before we make you come back into another rehearsal. <laughs> yeah. um, a big thank you to Matthew Ball. Thank, thank you. you. You can take that off. Thank you. Thank you. Now, it's time to find out more from the creative team. We've just heard uh, a little bit from Alistair and from Jonathan, but please welcome back Jonathan Howe's costume designer and Alistair Marriott, our choreographer. Let's, um, let, let's sort of carry on the, you know, the, the description that you were um, telling us about where the piece came from, but you've done all this research. What's been your biggest discovery as you've like, looked at that footage and you've talked to people? And... I think the, the biggest thing for me, and this probably sounds crazy, but when, when you watch the very old films, they look like Charlie Chaplin movies, yeah. which makes it seem a very, very long way away. Yes, from yeah. a, a younger generation. But when um, you get footage of somebody who seems like my great aunt, who mm. lived through it, um, it really brings it home to you that it's just that one generation away. Yes. Um, and I know that, uh, that coming up, there's some film at the uh, National Film Theatre where they're, they're, they're actually... Um, cleaning up those old films. Um, I think it's Peter Jackson has got yes, one coming yeah. out where it's uh, in colour. And then when you look at it, it's quite shocking because it looks like it was yesterday. Mm. And I think that's the thing that really hits me, that it, yeah. that it was not that long ago that yeah. these boys went off and yeah. witnessed this. And I mean, this, in this production, we've got some of that old footage, I think, being shown on yes, the stage. Yeah. Um, but also in the music, I think we've got a voiceover from Florence who you were talking about yeah, as well. Yeah, well, this is one so, of the things. Was when I did the research and I found Florence, I kind of fell in love with her. And I could have just cut her out and had a dancer just play her. But I felt like it was amazing that someone had the foresight at the BBC and then there's another... Um, documentary by a production company that thought we must record these people while they're still here um, and I thought well we have to see her we've got to like yeah. actually hear her and see her and the same with him so I have got um, small amounts of dialogue um, so that you actually see the real Florence and then the dancers play these characters when they were young. And it was a juggling act not to get too much documentary footage because it is a ballet after all. Mm. But I just felt like I'd always wanted that kind of narr narrator thing in a ballet. But when I met Ez, she was so kind of confident, like, let's just do it, <laughs> just do it, like, put, it, put her in it. Um, and I'm really pleased now we see her older and then you see her younger underneath her. Yeah, being danced. Being danced, being danced. yeah. And this is, I think, the second time that you both worked with Ez. Yes, yeah. It's well, actually, third. Third yeah. time. Yeah. Third time. And yeah. is, is it different as, as the relationship develops, mm. you know, how you're working? Because I think you sort of feel that this is a co-conceived project. Yeah, the, the first her. time we worked together was on a part of the closing ceremony of the Olympics. And... It was a really stressful day in a car park in somewhere... <laughs> in East London, wasn't it? Somewhere glamorous. Yeah. yeah. And it was raining, and we were on this bungalow on stilts looking at the stage. This he was. I was car. in the rain. He was in the rain. <laughs> he was in the rain. With all these hundreds of women on point crying. And yeah. it got very stressful, and all the, the director and everyone was getting really kind of tense. And she was so calm and confident. Yes. And us three with theirs went on to the, they call it the field of play. And they were going, oh, is this too slippery? Is this too slippery? Like, oh, what are we going to do? And she said, it's the three days. I, I can't change the floor. And we were like, well, the floor's fine. Because earlier in the week, I'd put 100, 220 women yeah. on point in the rain on the stage, and they hadn't fallen over. So I was like, just leave it, just leave it. <laughs> 
And <laughs> we just kind of just said, You just hit it off there, didn't yeah, you? Yeah. yeah. It's fine, it's fine. Yeah. So that um, came before Connect that, Home. Yeah. Yeah. Before, yeah. Yeah. Then I rang her and said, would you like to do Connect Home? Yeah. And I really liked working with her. So she seemed the obvious choice for, for this. Yes. Except for, Ez does so many different things and she's kind of moved past being just a designer now. So mm -hmm. she said, I want to be much more involved in the okay, conceptualization, yeah. which she kind of had done on um, Connect yes, really. Yes, she did. So I was thrilled, because I quite like collaborating. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I was thrilled about that. Yeah. And the two of you in terms of collaborating, and mm. I bring that in rehearsals um, for the yeah. sort of last week or so, but it's really interesting watching you two together, and I guess you've worked together a lot. Yeah. Um, but just watching, I mean, how, how is it working with each other? Because it seems that you're sort of coming up with ideas and honing it down all the time by with conversation. Is that something that...? Yeah, um, that has been a, a kind of learning curve over the years. But as we've grown up together, and I've always worked on Alice's Ballets, um, I think that my role has evolved, mm. evolved as well. So. I know when to step in and when to step out. Yeah. I know that I can give him suggestions. I can quietly whisper in his ear, I'm not sure about that bit, maybe you should rethink it. And he might go, bugger off, I actually like it, uh, you know. Uh, but so it's a real kind of collaboration. Yeah. But he's the boss. I mean, yeah. he sets it all. I just, you know, I kind of usually get the feeling of what he wants because yeah. he you know I spend my life with him yes. so he talk about it a lot so but um, I think also he is a ballet master yes yeah. and that he's very very good at rehearsing yeah, yeah running the rehearsal room for, and so yeah. I once I've choreographed it I sit back from the rehearsing so that yes. I can watch it and while he's doing all the counts uh, with uh, you know I then can go, I want to change that. Or I guess you can sit back can and look at the shape of it, can't yeah. you? Yeah. I give him the room. Yeah. yeah. I think sometimes you have to know when, uh, uh, when you, you shouldn't micromanage. That's what I yeah. feel like. I feel yeah. like you find people in your life, like Ez, who are really amazing. And if you really want to collaborate, you have to learn to let go a bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, do you go home talking about it? Do you, when yeah. you're working on these yeah. projects? Usually you just... when we're cooking dinner, <laughs> yeah. I put the music Me on. cooking dinner. <laughs> and we talk about it, and then once we have dinner, then it stops. Yeah. So That's your cut-off moment yeah, for cut work. Yeah, cut-off moment after yeah. dinner. Yeah. So we, and, uh, and because this uh, guy that did the music is... Um, Dario Marinelli. Dario. Yeah, he, he's an, you know, an Oscar-winning composer that... Usually what happens is you just get the piano or you ask for a Sibelius, which is a kind of computerised version. And I've before said, I, I, want the, I want that. And then they say, well, it doesn't sound quite right. I want it anyway. And then it arrives. It doesn't sound anything like the music because it's on a computer. But this guy, it almost convinces you it really is an orchestra because they have much more high tech yeah, it's, it's very impressive, That's how isn't it? Works it works with film. Yeah, brilliant. Um, before we, we are going to talk about the music, but I just want to talk about the costumes because yeah. we've got the costumes um, here that um, in the studio with us. Jonathan, do you want to just talk about Because you've obviously designed the costumes as well. Yeah, and I, which was a surprise to me. <laughs> because actually, I did design, I've designed for Alistair before yes. for different ventures yeah. and stuff. And um, I designed Connectum for him, which as was not, she wasn't particularly keen on designing the costumes for that, which were more like a um, kind of leotard thing. Now, this was period, but as we thought Ez was going to do mm. the set and the costumes, mm. uh, but we were having a kind of meeting with our director, Kevin O'Hare, um, in um, Balthazar across the road, <laughs> and uh, Ez came along and we were all sitting there, and uh, Kevin said to Ez, um, oh, uh, so uh, costumes, you know, how's all that going? And she has just turned to me and said, well, how are they going, John? <laughs> and of course, <laughs> shocked to Kevin, he was like, right, OK, this is new, that's all fine. So Ez basically just handed it over, over well, I think, it's, I think it's nice that she trusts John yeah. to yes, do that. Yeah. Like, the, the yeah. first time she worked with us, 
she, he showed her designs that he'd done for other buyers. Yeah. And I think she realised, you know, as a designer, leotards and things, they're very specialised, and he'd made loads yeah. of them. She, they discussed what look she wanted to go with it, yeah. and she was very happy with it. So I think this time she thought, no, he can do that. Yeah. yeah. And he had done a, a kind of period dress for an opera singer in yeah. Queen's Birthday yes. Gala. Yeah. And it was, very, it was actually meant to be a very famous, it was meant to be um, the same designer, what's her name, that did... Uh, um, Burton. For Alexander McQueen. Yeah. Um, Sarah Burton. Yeah. And she then got the commission to do the, uh, the, uh, the wedding dress. dress. Yeah. But, and so she was not available. And at the last minute, I thought, what do we do, what do we do? So I just said, you'll have to do it. <laughs> Yeah. And, and the opera singer wanted to buy it. They yeah, really yeah. liked the dress. So, you know, it is possible yeah. to move through. And what was your, where did the I inspiration was, come from? Well, I was slightly reason? nervous about doing yeah. these because it's a period thing. And also, to do period and get dancers to be able to dance in them is quite tricky. Uh, you know, in 1914, the uh, women's dresses are very heavy, yeah. long, uh, thick material. Ideal for dancing. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Think Downton Abbey. It's yeah, not, yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah. You know, easy. So I wanted to, um, with obviously with the discussion of Alistair and Ayres, we wanted to do something that had a period feel, but was light and kind of yeah. adaptable. Now, I... Um, with, that's with the women, and I think I've uh, achieved that. And uh, I wanted to get them slightly dirty looking, not so pristine yeah. new. So you get that kind of, you're slightly looking in the past and everything. Yeah. And then when it came to the soldiers' costume, you know, they were really thick wool. I did, you know, mm. all my research on it. And obviously, we have to have a soldier's costume. They are soldiers. Um, but I wanted to try and modernise them yes. in a way, not only that they were able to dance in them, but also to give a kind of interesting feel. So I came up with the idea that I think the uh, soldier's costume should have been tri uh, slightly translucent, just so you could see the person, the person inside, inside the uniform. But there's a sort of ghost-like quality as yeah, well, isn't there? Yeah, to them, which exactly. sort of yeah, yeah. Yeah. Back. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking about that, sort of having that period feel, which is what Dario's done with the music, mm. isn't it? You yeah. can hear almost the last post with that, those yes. trumpet yes. moments. Yeah. And we've got a bit of the music to listen to, which I think isn't, isn't that big theme. It's mm, a no. different bit. Do you want to just talk about it? Yes, this I bit of the music, it's a bit different from the music we It's the only piece in hearing. the score that sounds like a specific kind of period piece. And that's because they go to a local dance hall and there's a rag. And the, re the reason that this is here is because, the, A, I needed to show that there was a light-hearted side um, because Florence talks about these young people going to the dance and, and having lots of fun and things. But also, it's the first time with American soldiers coming over that you get that black influence of music into this country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you get that kind of slightly, you know... So it's kind of of its period, really, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. So people were doing the foxtrot to it. Um, which we've had to kind of learn how to do a fox. You're doing that today, really. Yeah. <laughs> doing that today. And also, they, they, ordinary people started to learn these formal dances, but they, they, um, they made up easy versions. So some of them were based on animals, like there's the grizzly bear and there's all sorts of funny dances. But we've had to look at all of these things. And you actually looked at the castles, which were really this famous. This dance couple, the yeah. castles, yeah, Irene Castle and that. Yeah. And I discovered that Sir Fred, when he did ballets like Facade, some of the steps that I thought he'd choreographed, he's directly taken he's from the yeah, castles. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh my God, I get it now. Yeah. Uh, very good. Let's listen to the music. Yeah. What I should say is the music's a computer version. It's not yes. um, the Royal Opera House yeah. Orchestra yet playing. This is the Sibelius we got, yeah. Um, yeah. But it will give you a sense, which I think it has yeah. for you as well. Yeah. So yeah. let's have a listen. <laughs>
that's, that's quite a nice light relief, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly, and Alistair really wanted to, uh, in the piece, because there was a lot of fun in the, in the research in those days. They wanted to enjoy themselves before they all went off to war. Because I think also it's really important to think yeah. that these young people, a lot of them came from these villages, they had no idea what they were going into. So they'd never been abroad. Which is what Florence says, isn't it? Florence in the, says in the, at the very the, um, beginning of the ballet, the, yeah. yeah, she says, you know, she remembers like they them all going off time. onto the boat and they were all laughing yeah. and having a, like they were having this marvellous party. And now she thought, oh gosh, that always makes her sad because they had no idea what was on the other yeah. side. But I think it gave these young lads an opportunity to say, go to London before they were going there. And they went out dancing and met these girls and yeah. things. So it was like a big adventure until mm. they obviously yeah. got there. So in the ballet, Alistair really wanted this particular section to have the, that kind of fun side before we start to see start the dark to side into of what happened. Yeah. Yeah. So we're now going to watch the second bit of rehearsal. Yeah. Um, do you want to just, this is um, Matthew doing a, another solo, yeah. but this is much later in the ballet. Yeah, so the it? first one's right at the very beginning of the ballet, and this is right at the end. <laughs> and what you have to imagine as it gets towards the end of the thing is that there's a lot of men dancing with him. It starts off with just him, and they gradually all come on. Now, Florence thought that it was at the end of the ballet she talks about how it's comforting to know that people can still be there even when they're not there which is the idea of remembrance yeah. if you remember them they're still there it's when you forget them that they're not and she all she also was a spiritualist and she went to this lady who said there's a young boy that always stands by your shoulder and she said i know who that is this is when she was he said he'd never leave me and he likes to be close to me all the time. So when you see Matt come on, he watches Florence upset at his uh, death and that frustration makes him run and then he dances. But what we can't show you is at the end of the ballet, he watches the old Florence talk about him. Uh, so, um, so you only get that little bit at the on moment. On that very sad note. It's, yeah, quite sad. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> As ever, we want to hear from you, so do keep sending your comments and your thoughts in on YouTube. Um, we've already had a couple of lovely comments in um, from Andrea. What an amazing dancer. Love the choreography. Um, from Valu. I love it when choreographers talk about the meaning of the steps. I think we're just about to get ready. Uh, Matthew's just come back in. Um, and so please welcome back Matthew Ball, Alistair Merritt, Jonathan House, and of course Philip on the piano. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, Matt. So I have to get my counts out. I'm not like perfect on them yet, but I will be eventually. <laughs> Um, Matt, um, so there's that 10 in where you walk on, is this correct, Al? Yeah. He threw the, these, like, um, louvre doors at the back of the set and you walk on slowly. Florence is over here, she's just been given the news that um, her young lover has uh, been killed and uh, the uh, women come around her and she slowly walks off. And this is that moment Alistair was just talking about, that you, even though you're kind of like a bit of, can I say, like a spirit, spiritual kind of creep? Uh, I, yes, I think or... that, I, I mean, I think realistically, we see it as memory, but Florence yeah. really believed that he stayed with her. And I, I think that's something that, every individual thinks very differently about. But um, after listening to lots and lots of her um, outtakes from the documentaries, I realised that's how she, that's what she really believed. And we might take that as memory, but I have to be truthful to Florence. And um, yeah. so I feel like Matt 
witnesses when the telegram comes, but he can't do anything about it. So he's almost by her shoulder. Yeah. So he watches, and all the women, she's kind of really shell-shocked, and they all help her off. And then he does the solo. So Matt, kind of interestingly, as has said something tonight that we haven't really discussed in rehearsals yet, but um, he talked, he's talked about the frustration of seeing this and knowing that you're not going to be with her. So this run which happens, this big run, it's like you're really watching and then it's like inside, it's that slow, it's like the annoyance that this, is, this has happened in that huge second. We kind of need to build the energy into that first um, jump on the nine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So should we just have a little go at mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Um, if you've played that ten in, um, of Florence going off with the girls, that would be great. Yeah. Can you remember the counts, Matt? So you've got a, so after that it's a, um, and a, we've always got the and a before. Um, one, two, three, four, five, and then the and a, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. nine. Yeah. So I don't know, because we've got the piano there, normally Matt would probably run through the piano, <laughs> but we haven't got this uh, space here. So on the stage that will happen, so we might have to just try and kind of gauge that. Okay, if you can play that ten, please, Philip. Thank you. And... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And a one, two, three, four, five. And a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Jump nine. And a one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Good, 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 Matt. Uh, thanks, Philip. I just wanted to, I mean, one of the things that I was thinking when I was watching it was that it's when I got all of the, the documentaries. I asked the BBC and that to send me all the, um, the footage I, that wasn't involved because I wanted to see all the bits they cut out. But what they did was they, they gave me all the transcripts of everything that they'd said. And then I had to choose the bits that they then would send me. They wouldn't send me the, all the outcuts. And I think that's what's fascinating, fascinating about when you watch the ballet, you only hear little bits of her memories, but I've had all the transcripts to work on. So sometimes the things that you watch may not be said, but I, I have them. So that's why he does these things. Yes. I think that's important when yes. you watch him Absolutely. run around. And he thought that he would die. And you know when you watch like these big heroic films that they go off and they fight everyone? He, he was this young boy, he signed up, and just before he went away, he said to Florence, I'm not coming back. I, kn I know that I'm gonna die. And she started saying, w you know, she didn't know anything about war, so she was the 16-year-old girl trying to make him feel better, like, you'll be home by Christmas and we'll get together and it's gonna be fine, just make the most of it. But he was right. So when she received the telegram, she almost knew it was going to happen because he'd said, I'm not coming back, I know I'm not going to come back. And bravery is not the same as you see it in films. So he went off and nervous. Exactly he went that, off really nervous. That exactly happened how he thought. Yeah. So this moment is very important. It must be very frustrating for him. Matt, that run was really good. I really felt that. That was really good. Um, the that first jump, again, if you could, the jump, I think, El, do you think that is, I know we talked about earlier about the shooting in the back. Yeah, if you took a if, photograph, it's it like, be that. <coughs> and, yeah. oh, it's like you've been shot. Yeah, would be excellent. Yeah, exactly, yeah. This was, that was really nice. You just need to, Matt, just surprises on that jump. Yeah. Don't. Yeah, because you're, I think you're making it look like I know what's coming. So you need to hold back and then burst. And then the speed yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
Um, that was a bit... Yep, yeah, exactly, yeah. A bit more body there. Yeah. Out, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. And again, try that, Matt. The pirouette's absolutely gorgeous, and the head roll and all that. Just disguise the preparation. Yeah. Squeeze, go. Yeah, it's harder. But the more, what we don't like is you'd come out of character and suddenly do, you know, I'm going to about to do a, a pirouette. Yeah, surprises. Squeeze. Yes, good, good. And then keep this going, Matt. Keep it going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it's a musical thing as well. You don't want to, you know, it's, it's that whole thing of dynamics. It's the squeeze, squeeze, hold, and then, and then the surprise into the dun, 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 bum. Yeah. 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 If you play the nine, you don't have to do the run. Yeah. It's a bit late for that. Yeah. I could just play the nine and. And a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And a one, two, three, four. Good, Matt. Six, body. Seven, eight, and nine. Ten, eleven, twelve. Dynamics, thirteen. And a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. OK, stop. Just good, Matt. That was really nice, really nice. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's, this is really nice, it's it, this one, Matt, it's, it's the body that pulls you up on that, yeah. Go, 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 and pull, yep, exactly, yeah. I don't think you need the step together, because you're doing the movement so full now, I'd get rid of, otherwise it would make you, you late on that one, yeah. Yeah, six, seven, open, eight. Yeah, and that's, that's better. A, again, a surprise, isn't it? Yeah, six, it's like... seven, eight. You almost get the turn quicker. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> can you play, play the 13, and then, but don't do the 13, Matt. Just pick it up from when you've gone on the floor into the dum dum bum. Yeah. So just play the whole 13, yeah. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and early. Oh, okay. That's all right. Sorry, Matt. We're only one count. Oh. Yeah. Just play. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, yeah, nothing. And nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, surprise, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and a one, two, three, and a one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a one. Two, three, and a one. Two, okay, good, good, Matt. Really nice, really nice work. I thought it was quite good. I was like, <laughs> watching it, I was like, totally bored, Matt. <laughs> we can always improve. Yeah, yeah. No, really nice work, Matt. Just, um, the scissor was really, that was really nice. Because you yeah. did do, you left it to that last that moment. Great. And actually it gives, it's that, it's like opening up your heart. It should say, I think yes, it should say, exactly. why? Yeah. I think it's like saying, why? Yeah, yeah. Um, the, uh, after that, just remind me what comes after that. Da -da. Here, there. Oh yeah, that's good. That was, yeah, that was really nice. Okay, here, yeah, the seven. Yeah. Um, 
this thing Alistair talked about in rehearsals, it's, the feed, it's like feeding down your body with that hand. Yeah. And uh, one, two, three, three, open. And this is an explosion for, yeah, exactly, five, six, seven. And uh, one, two, three, and uh, again, Matt, yeah. Actually, you, do, you did it better just then. Yeah. Uh, it's, the, it's the gain, the way the body almost, its leg almost comes slightly after. And the arm later. Yeah, yeah. And uh, feed. That's better. Yes. That's, yeah. Did we, Alan, I can't remember what did you do. Uh, did you well, do a turn after that? We didn't originally, but he is adding a turn. <laughs> if, you, if you add a turn, you just have to yeah, add it yeah. sooner or you'll be yeah, late. Yeah. It's actually been quite a, co a collaboration with um, Alistair and Matt because Al, you know, gives his what he wants and everything and then uh, Matt will come into a rehearsal and then suddenly there'll be something in there that... But I know he's... when... You see, the thing is, this is... <laughs> I, I don't mind, but they think I don't know. <laughs> but, I, but if it bothers me, then I'll say I don't like it. Yeah. But if it's in the realms of it's musical and instead of going like that, he'll turn into it. And I watch it and it's fine, it's okay. But when they start re-choreographing, mm -hmm. like Father Durs and things, then it's different. Mm -hmm. But I quite like that kind of collaboration that it looks like him and not him behind me and me trying to show him everything because I don't look like Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about, so Matt, after that you've gone, um, you've done your turn, your hold, and then this is another shoot in the back moment where you come to the centre stage. Boom, yep, there. At this point, um, we have another load of sort uh, soldiers running around the stage like Matt at the beginning and it all builds up into this big um, section where they all dance identically together where Matt you run out on the seven eight nine and then the whole uh, um, the soldiers all the uh, load of them shoot to the floor and then they do this whole last dance in unison which is kind of quite amusing because Dario um, it's a beautiful section of music, actually, isn't it? It's a real build, and it's kind of really kind of heart-rendering music, and that's why Alistair chose him, because uh, he did, um, well, the film Atonement. he won, Atonement. Uh, the Oscar for was Atonement, which has that amazing scene at the end where, I don't know if you've seen the film, but there's this, uh, that it's on the beach, and there's um, all these uh, dead soldiers around, but there's this chorus of men singing, isn't there? And that's the moment that I was like, I really want this composer. Like, this is amazing But interestingly, when I, uh, when I spoke to him, originally that wasn't meant to have any music. And the director said, I don't want any music on this scene. And he thought, well, I think it would be better. So he made two versions and said, will you at least watch the second version? And that's the most famous bit of the film for me, is that the, this one panoramic shot with this music. And he is so good at making atmospheres that that's why I chose him to do the, yeah. the ballet. OK, so, Matt, let's do the ending bit. Now you've got to imagine a mass of uh, men People. on the stage. Um, so let's do that nine into All Together, Phil. Yeah. So, Matt, do you remember the count? So we've got the side. And uh, one leg. Two, three, four, five. And uh, one, two, three. And uh, open the legs on the one, two, three. And uh, one, two, three, four. And the preposition on the end. It's important. Five, six, seven, four steps. Eight, nine. 10, this is normal Giuseppe, 11, 12, and then the last one on 13. Yeah, and that's, we'll stop there because it doesn't really make sense without all the other boys that you carry on after that moment. But let's, um, let's uh, do that section and then we'll round up with Matt because it's a late night for him. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that nine in.
Thanks, Phil. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and shoot. One, leg two, three, four, reach five, and a one, two, three, and a one, two, three. Hold this, really use the body. Two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, jeté, nine, ten, eleven. Good, Matt. Very nice. Very nice. Just a slightly late, but it's fine. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> we'll rehearse that with the other one. Sadly, that is all that we have time for tonight. We have had people watching from all over the world, from Brazil, Canada, the Netherlands, Italy and Germany. Don't forget that you can see the Royal Ballet perform The Unknown Soldier here at the Royal Opera House from the 20th of November. So that just leaves me to say a very big thank you to our guests this evening. <laughs> Also to, be, uh, to say a very big thank you to our wonderful audience here in the Claw and thank you to all of you who are watching YouTube um, from across the world. Thank you very much and good night.